Hello, everybody, and welcome to What You Need to Know. I am Sybil Wilkes. It is Monday. It is Labor Day. Many of us have labored today. Uh, hopefully, folks had a good day and able to enjoy the day off. Uh, I am very, very happy and very proud to reintroduce and to bring back two gentlemen uh, that I'm just crazy about, both by the name of Williams, both by the, go by the name Damon Williams, by the way. Uh, Damon G. Williams for great. <laughs> And Damon A. Williams. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm, I'm grateful to be back on. So, but how are you? I'm really glad uh, to have you back and grateful that you uh, have the time because I know you're such a busy fellow, almost as busy as your dad. How you doing, <laughs> Damon G? I I'm doing good. You know, I'm almost I'm almost back in the saddle again. I've been moving around a little bit, you know, um, smaller shows and smaller checks, but still good laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> Big laughs, small checks. <laughs> I'm not ready to be around a whole bunch of people yet anyway. You know, I ain't yeah. the Rona roulette just yet. Yeah, I can imagine. I, 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 I'm not ready yet either. So good on you for, for going out there and, you know, trying to check the temperature and what have you, because I'm definitely. What about you, Damon A? Are you out and about? Are you uh, still I, I, quarantined in? I try to be as still as I can, you know, this summer with all that's been going on definitely brought us back out in the world a little bit. So, you know, doing some trainings here and there, but for the most part, I, I try to stay in the house as, as much as possible. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, we are here today. I wanted to um, bring people up to, to speed as to, because uh, we tried to get you, but as you said, you, you know, you've had a busy summer and, and the street, the street is hot. Uh, as they say. Um, but uh, for real, for real, we're going to talk about uh, the wonderful surprise. And for many of us, uh, not a surprise, but the wonderful gift of seeing your handsome face on the, in the covers of uh, the September issue of Vanity Fair magazine, the one with the beautiful portrait of Breonna Taylor on the cover. And so uh, we will talk about that but, um, and, and, and talk about all the things that, that you're doing and uh, once again, bringing about awareness to how things are uh, on the streets of Chicago, if not to, if not the rest of this country and the world. Um, as I said, this is Labor Day. And um, are you guys from labor families, union families? Not, I don't think we have any labor folks directly in our family, but like mm -hmm. I feel that, that like my work and my political life is in right. the lineage of, of labor struggle. So I really uh respect the history yeah uh and, and i do too i think that you are definitely uh in that line and and i didn't know if it, it came down from you know from generations and generations i i uh have my mom was a chicago public school teacher so of course she was in that union um my dad was a chicago fireman but when my dad was a fireman they didn't have a union in chicago uh right. we, we, yeah and that's how long ago it was. And so he passed before the uh, Chicago firemen got a union. And, and, and you can imagine how things were then as a black man with the Chicago Fire Department and not having any union support. And uh, so, but my mom was a, a longtime union person. And I remember going to those meetings and things like that with the Chicago Teachers Union and what have you. But in, in the newsletter, and I don't know if you guys got a chance to see this, but we did talk about the role that black people have played in the unions and um, especially going back, uh, the first labor union uh, that was created by the abolitionist F Frederick Douglass, mm. according to a lot of records, and it was the American League of Colored Laborers. And this was the first national black, uh, that was followed by the first national black labor union in 1869. And then um, in Chicago, of course, um, knowing about the Pullman factory mm -hmm. and, and the Pullman transportation and the, 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 the trains, uh, we had access to Pullman Village. And that, you know, goes back in uh, back into the uh, late 1890s into the 1900s. And finally, how A. Philip Randolph uh, was the one to start the, the brotherhood of the, the um, sleeping car porters. And my uncle was was one of those uh, porters on the trains. And so um, it's just really interesting uh, to, to see about it. And for the people who might not know or be familiar with it, because, you know, I, I sort of am, uh, that Pullman situation, which they're really trying to renovate that now. Yeah. That in that community. It was, the, it was the pipeline back to the South for yeah. new back and forth. Uh, the, the, the porters were really like, 
you know, a, a black telegram service. They brought the yeah. uh, Chicago Defender copies down yeah. south, and that's where paper got circulated. So it's a rich history there. Now, my mother was union. She was she worked for Illinois Bell, AT&T yeah. for her life. And so, yeah, that answers that question as well. Yeah. Um, and so, Damon, and Damon, uh, I haven't been over uh, in that area for quite some time, but but as you say, they have tried to revive it and to, um, to bring like a, a visitor center and really make it a tourism area in Pullman Village on the south side of Chicago. Have you guys been over there lately? No, but I, I just saw an, uh, an uh, interview or a story on the news just today mentioning that the fact that they're uh, about to do something with the structures that are there, you know, the historic mm -hmm. buildings and such. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's it's uh it's a really a deep history part of our city, and and it's right here on the south side. So yeah. Um, but you you are absolutely right when you talk about the role that the porters played, and 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 they really were our, our method of communication in a lot of respects because not only did, when they had the time, if they had the time, they would read the Defender and other things, and and share with us the news as they came back and forth. Uh, before people could get, even get a hold of those papers sometimes. So it's, it's really amazing uh, the role that they played in, in our lives, not only as, as working men, but as men who were communicators too. Yeah, and you know, we, we have to admit that, you know, one, I got the Frederick Douglass hanging behind me, uh, but, but the struggle for, for black people and for like liberation in life always has been tied up to the struggle around economic justice, uh, and labor relations. So, you know, Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis in yep. a labor struggle. Um, yep. And, you know, I could go down the list line of the history of how the notion of civil rights, the notion of what you could even call black power, or black liberation, yep. um, even, you know, the, the beginnings of like the connection between police brutality and the fights that we've been waging against that struggle has been interconnected uh, with labor unions. So we need to really uplift um the work that's happening now um there's yeah. actually uh on a national level uh the development of, right. of strike language that's happening uh, mm -hmm. in the name for black lives um in correlation with the movement for black lives um you know we've been definitely in close relationship here in chicago which is ctu which you, you uplifted already yeah. um and then also the, the fight for you know a higher minimum wage of 15 dollars not only in the state but nationally Right. Uh, has been a, a current labor fight that's happening. So everybody who's enjoying this holiday should know that, you know, for the last hundred years, people have been stepping up for us to have weekends, for us to have protections. <laughs> to have 40 um, hour weeks, remember, yeah. you know, and you talk about uh, the conditions in which, uh, you know, our people worked, obviously, uh, our people uh, before, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, before there was a uh, freedom, um, but also just uh, the, the conditions in which they work, the, the hours, getting weekends off, uh, what, what was a vacation, uh, you know, and the money, uh, setting a level uh, for, w for which people uh, should be paid. And it's just, uh, and as you mentioned, uh, Dr. King's final appearance, public appearance, was in Memphis, where he was there with the sanitation workers. Uh, and, and you saw that sign of those men who had been uh, striking for two months before Dr. King got there uh, and made that appearance. And, and I've been to the mountaintop speech on April 3rd of 1968. Um, we, we do have a long, long history. And even, and it's not just about uh, the men, also domestic workers um, who, were, who were led by, it was a Dorothy Lee, um, who uh, Dorothy Lee Bolden was the founder of the National Domestic Workers Union. Uh, as well, and a set a standard uh, for for women who worked in homes to be paid, uh, as a as opposed to you know uh, everything being under the table and and getting social security and and all of those things uh, that came about as as a result of her work. And not only did they cut the hours down to forty hour work weeks, that's how you get them two fifteen minute breaks too. <laughs> right, <laughs> for real, David. Yes. <laughs> And it breaks that saved a lot of jobs. A lot of okay. just snap out on the boss and they're yeah. like, you know what? I'm gonna take my break. <laughs> 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 Both made in the face. Yep. We we could have used some of those in radio, Damon, I I, I dare say. <laughs> okay. Right right this very moment, uh, but um that's another story. Um are are you involved, uh, Damon A. and and Damon G. in the uh, in watching what's going on with the campaign at this point? Are you involved or are you interested? 
Um, I, I'm, I'm interested in uh, how Black people are responding to the campaign and, mm-hmm. and trying to like gauge the political consciousness of our people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am not interested in the candidates <laughs> themselves. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I'm highly critical uh, of, of all that we have available. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm much more critical of the systemic processes themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but what I understand that's really important before I get into all of my big words uh, is that like fascism is on the rise mm-hmm. with, with our uh, current administration. Uh, and so, like, before we get into any of the depths, just like how dangerous that is uh, for marginalized, for, for black people, for people of color um, a- across the world. So, you know, we definitely have a real danger. It's, it's a dangerous time. Uh, uh, it so, is. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Ha- I'm sorry, Damon, go ahead. Well, my, 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 I've been kind of outspoken on the fact that, you know, we've had a lot of people come out and say that the Democrats and we as black people should hold them accountable and, and have them have a, a specific agenda for us as a people before we vote in this next election. And I think that's the wrong uh, approach, in my opinion. I think even if we were to go with the Democrats as a people, uh, they still can't do us any good with that agenda if they don't get into office. And it's bigger than just the two candidates, in my opinion. It's, it's the, the judges down the line. It's his incompetent cabinet right. members of you know, the education secretary. She got to go. Uh, mm-hmm. Somebody needs to wake up Ben Carson and walk him home. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's real <laughs> we we just saw him a couple of weeks ago at the convention and somebody had to put a mirror under his nose you know, yeah, you know and he's he's a, you know the head of housing go home just go to yeah. your house yeah <laughs> yeah um it, damon it it uh it bears uh and especially in terms of what's going on in the cities of of of, of like portland uh, mm-hmm. and, and talking about, uh, and when you talk about fascist behavior, give people an idea, uh, if you can, of, of, of how you see this administration uh, demonstrating fascism and, and what uh, has resulted on our streets. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm sure like in the last few months, a few years, people have started to like Google this word. It kind of like went away from our like collective understanding uh, of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, our current times make them very prevalent. And I, I say that to say that in a lot of ways, the infrastructure of fascism is mm-hmm. interwoven into American society. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think one of the, the dangers about how we look at the Trump administration uh, is that we use his uh, horrible, ridiculous personality to like single him out and not look at how he is a symptom of a larger problem instead mm-hmm. of the cause of the problem as we like to like make it seem. So uh, fascism, uh, one, is, you know, a a 20th century movement that is about domination and control uh, is usually uh, intertwined with like control of military power. So that's Mm -hmm. why I think you see right now, uh, you know, what you mentioned, the the use of like federal troops to respond to protesters. But I think even on a local level, uh, what we have to recognize and really speak towards is like Trump's base uh, is this Blue Lives Matter uh, very yeah. racist police state and that for mm-hmm. the last, you know, few generations, fascism has been rooted in a lot of our police departments. Um, so when you see things like Klan rallies or you see things like swastikas or, or some of the other symbolic language or some of these like Twitter trolls or you see people mm-hmm. excited or happy uh, once people are getting shot in the streets at protests and, and, and naming the shooters as heroes, um, yeah. that is speaking to like a, a deeper way in which America sees dominance as a form of power. Um, and as a, a value system. Um, and so within fascism, usually it is about uh, um, scapegoating minorities. So as you right. see it with like indigenous folks or what we call you know, Latinx or Spanish speaking communities, obviously what's happening to black people, um, the, the rise of homophobia and transphobia as a way to, to name that there is an outsider that's a problem. There's usually like a foreign right. threat. So now there's all this conversation about China and about the other side, and, I mean, about the outsider. Um, Mm -hmm. coming to take our jobs. Um, And it's all about this competition and this dominance. Uh, um, And it it empowers a majority based off a very hyperactive minority um, that then, so like, you know, these white Trumpers uh, that then directly oppress and beat down uh, minority people who are vulnerable. Uh, And then usually the last thing is like control of of factions of government. So the thing that I think is really concerning um, is like using the post office um, as like political, you know, game and capital. So the reason why I gave that large history say that Trump um, 
from a like ideological level is like putting gas mm -hmm. in the car of fascism. Uh, yeah. But the reason why I say I'm, I'm disappointed with all of the candidates or the entire structure is I think that both parties have been building the vehicle. Um, yeah. And so, you know, the, they, the, they the, both the, play a part yeah, in that. The, yeah. the agents that Trump sent to Portland uh, were funded and created by the Democratic Party. The deportation that we're seeing that Trump do at these brutal levels or the, you know, the, the, the uh, internment camps of children on the border, um, that is something, unfortunately, that the Obama administration invested in as well. Um, mm -hmm. They just don't say the bad thing, right? <laughs> or they don't right. um, yeah. um, hype up that ground racist fervor in the same way, which then explodes into this like type of fascist warfare that we're seeing. Um, so in terms of like the historical preferences, uh, references, right. we look at like Italy and Germany, uh, mm -hmm. And usually it like just happened right in the face of folks um, kind of just like allowing, you know, oppression or, or bigotry to like sure. become, to rise become up. The, the, yeah. And to rise up. Um, Damon, if this world were yours, who would you like or, or, or do you even see um, the use of a two party political system? If this world were yours, who or or what type of system would you like to see um, as a part of our for lack of a better word, democracy. Yeah, yeah. So that's the first thing uh, is I would like to see a participatory system. So mm -hmm. I think one of the problems with how we view electoral arena of politics uh, is that it's actually depoliticizing. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea of I'm going to pick one person to then make all of the choices, as opposed to I'm going to uh, have a person that I select to administrate and be accountable to me, uh, mm -hmm. and then I'm participating in the choices between the four years is the first thing. Uh, so one participatory democracy is, I think, a language that we need. And right now, we have representative democracy, right. where an elite say, we, we will do it for you. So right now, 535 people make the decision for three or 400 million people. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I would say is that we need a multi-party system mm -hmm. um, to like make it basic. So I think this binary and of, of this competition that's really performative uh, is really problematic. And then we would have like a ranked choice where you can say, hey, I want this person first, and then I want this person second, and then maybe this person third or fourth. Uh, and then within that, we build government based off coalition. Uh, and so, I would also like to see um, state power or political economy built up from the communal level uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to from like hierarchical bureaucracy. So I feel mm -hmm. like kind of like the, the level of like the block club should yeah. be where government is happening, should be where decisions are being made. Um, and then we go up each level in terms of resources and power. Um, uh, so yeah, so, so, you know, first, I do think that both parties are harmful if we want to be practical. Um, you know, what's happening in the Green Party or the Working Families Party, mm -hmm. uh, or even within like the Democratic Socialist wing, I think is a step in the right direction. Um, I do think though, however, we have to have like a larger conversation about the constitution itself, and then particularly about the electoral college when we're talking about the federal mm -hmm. uh, executive branch. Uh, that is a slave-based system. Uh, it, it is not created for democracy, it's created for white, Southern landowners to have right. more power, um, and they use that power for warfare and incarceration and corporate exploitation, um, and it's destroying the planet and like making people really sick. Uh, and so I think this whole notion of I don't have a direct vote, uh, whereas we can see the last two Republican presidents did not win the popular vote to enter office initially, right? And right. the fact that the Democratic Party doesn't say that more uh, speaks to a little level of complicity uh, mm -hmm. that frustrates me. I think yeah. what the thing that at the end of the day, and I'll stop here, um, is that the way that media um, filters the conversation and makes mm -hmm. it look like these are the two poles of politics, mm -hmm. uh, when actually they agree much more uh, on the basics do. of of war, of of our healthcare system, mm -hmm. of corporate power, of the power of workers and labor, um, uh, and they do these performances uh, that I think are to keep folks distracted and keep folks entertained uh, in a way that don't have us in strikes the way we were twenty third. I mean, in the twenties and thirties, and this holiday that we're celebrating. Do you see uh, any um, organizations such as you're talk talking about with the block clubs being that first level of government for us um, in, in, on a local level? Do you see any communities uh, in our country that do exemplify that, that have, have tried it and are succeeding on some level? Yeah, usually it happens in like small experiments um, for like a few weeks or a few months. Uh, you see like liberated zones There's something happening in mm -hmm. Seattle right now. Um, we did something here in Chicago called Freedom Square in 2016 um, right. in the West Side where we like held the space 
24 seven uh, for a few months. Um, what I've been seeing that I think is like the example uh, is mutual aid. Um, and so particularly in the pandemic where there's been a shortage of goods and supplies, uh, mm -hmm. folks redistributing food and groceries and passing those out for free. Uh, and those being the beginning of like local decision making, what we you know, making sure folks have COVID testing and basic needs are being met. Um, and, and within that, you'll start to see like the beginnings of it. But the truth is like the model that I want to see, um, one often doesn't have the resources or mm -hmm. is facing heavy opposition uh, right. from those in power. So it's usually not sustainable with what's available right now, but I've seen a lot of the seeds being planted. Do you, can I, can sure. just, of course. Um, you know, are there any um, examples of a, a democracy or a government structure that closely model what you would like to see the United States be that you're aware of around the world? Uh, yeah, throughout the third world. Um, I mean, there's a lot of like uh, pre-colonial examples. So I think that that's something we need to just like always register is that like, Human beings have been living for 250,000 years. There were tens and tens of thousands of years of civilization throughout Africa, throughout the Middle East, throughout South and Central America before these last four to 500 years that we think is like all of history. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, throughout the, the, the South, you know, in Colombia, um, um, throughout, um, I think in Angola and some places in the Congo, you'll see these local council type basic like participatory democracies that usually have some type of like intergenerational decision-making councils um, and they're happening on a small level. They're usually happening with less resources. Um, so it's not like high technology, uh, but oftentimes you'll see that there's like longer life expectancies um, um, and then also like there is no militarism. So one place, mm -hmm. if, if for example, in um, Colombia is Palenque. Uh, it is the first place in the Western hemisphere where slaves liberated themselves. Because mm -hmm. um, slavery started in South America first, um, <clears throat> and they still speak African languages uh, from the Congo and from other parts of uh, Western uh, Africa, um, and they are usually an arts-based community that, that goes out and travels and performs and then brings back resources and sustains decision making. So on like a global scale, they will be considered living in poverty, uh, but like on a cultural and almost like spiritual level that, that they are living in what I would consider like a wealth um that is kind of beyond you know i think what we're doing <laughs> do you think you'll see something like this in your lifetime huh. <laughs> um because you know, i'm old i'm gonna tell yeah. you I, I don't see this happening in the next 40 years but 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 in your no, lifetime no no i don't see my vision happening in my lifetime i do think that we can build healthy models and alter alternatives i do think we can start to use current infrastructure like land trust models um, and cooperatives and, you know, doing more like uh, urban communal farming and, and sustainable regenerative food sources. I think you can do small pieces. So it's happening sure. here. There's like an organization in Chicago called the Sweetwater Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they do this regenerative, like hydroponic from the farm to the fish to the, you know, there are models happening. Uh, I don't see the end of like the American empire as I right. would like happening in my yeah. lifetime. Right. Um, uh, but I do see possibilities, um, particularly with the new advantages of technology for the next generation to get us closer. Uh, but but to, to like try to stay focused, you gotta play the long game. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a hard enough time getting through Zoom calls, Damon. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> How these how these conversations and these levels of 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 leadership and everything uh, would work, but I, I'm fascinated by the idea and and um, and so um, in terms of people getting more information from you about what you're doing um, while while we're at this point, how can people reach you? Um, well, I'm at Damon underscore AF AF April Fools uh, uh -huh, on, April on Fools, Instagram sure. and Twitter. Uh, uh -huh. that's the truth. And, and then also you can follow the organization, the Let Us Breathe Collective at Let Us Breathe 773 on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and then you can also follow the Black Abolitionist Network, uh, which is doing a lot of great work here locally in Chicago this summer. So let's talk about what you've been doing this summer, because everybody... Um, from mainstream media is telling about the violence and 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 how uh, you know the the business life of downtown Chicago has been destroyed forevermore and mm -hmm. um, and without concentrating once again on what the purpose of of, of protesting and, and was about and mm -hmm. allowing other things to to uh, just kind of erase 
the the good and the purpose of what what folks are doing. Yeah, yeah. So and and I also want to speak to what happened downtown, but but I'll get to you know what, what like we've been doing on the ground. Yeah. Um, so you know, so far this summer, uh, we've trained through a political education series over like thirteen to fifteen hundred people uh, about how state violence, you know, has affected Black people and how the, the history of building movement. Um, and political action and direct action helps create social and, and societal change. Um, and so that work has been happening under the hashtag defund CPD. Uh, the Chicago Police Department is the, the largest police department per capita uh, of any major city in the United States. Um, it has had one of the worst uh, histories in terms of homicides and, and abuse. Uh, as well as misconduct settlements. Um, mm. Also has, uh, I, I'm now uh, formally working with the Chicago Torture Justice Center, uh, mm. which works yeah. with survivors of John Burge torture, a police commander uh, who for 20 years ran a ring of organized torture uh, for false confessions um, and, and for information. Um, and so in Chicago, there was an ordinance that gave reparations uh, yeah. to those survivors and to their family members. Um, one, also it should be named that the current administration is not following through uh, with all the commitments on that reparation package. Mm. And that's one thing that should be pushed. There are also um, survivors of torture who are still um, incarcerated uh, for 20, 30 years uh, uh, for crimes they did not commit. Uh, but within that, that is just a piece of some of the work um, under this larger push for divestment from carceral militarism or from systems of punishment and, and mass incarceration, uh, whether that be prisons, jails, police, or all forms of surveillance. Uh, because the claim is that police do not keep us safe. If anything, right. Chicago and the South and West Side um, is a prime example of how policing and over-policing um, actually does not work. And I would argue, you know, perpetuates violence and instability. Sure. Uh, and so trying to push folks uh, to understand that we can redistribute those resources to services that build healthy communities. Um, and so within that, you've seen a lot of mutual aid efforts, you've seen training, you've seen protests. Uh, we got the removal of the uh, Douglas Park. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing. We got the removal of the Columbus statue. As right. you see Frederick Douglass is behind mm -hmm. me. Um, Stephen Douglas Park has, has been renamed to uh, Anna and Frederick Douglass Park on the west side of Chicago. Um, so a lot of action has been built um, towards building larger movement structures mm -hmm. for longer transformational change under this notion that this is a historical legacy of oppression of black people um, and the way to keep safe black communities is to abolish uh, violent systems of racist oppression and create new solutions. Um, and that's really what we're trying to open up the conversation for. Uh, it's not about getting rid of just bad things. Uh, it is about we need to, in these new times, update our society. Um, right. and we need a, a presence of new services and new resources that actually are preventative and are healthy in their responses. And how do you do all this in the age of a pandemic? A lot of it has been virtual. Um, also figuring out how to experiment with outdoor social distancing events. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, the thing about the south and west side of Chicago is that it's underdeveloped. Uh, mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of actual open space uh, mm -hmm. that is not being used. So in the midst of housing crisis and medical crisis, uh, you'll just see acres of, of unused land. Mm -hmm. uh, and so revitalizing that land, claiming that land, um, loving that land and using that as a space to then educate people uh, where folks chairs are six feet apart and we have microphones and we have amplifiers um, and then passing out. Uh, PPE equipment, offering COVID testing to neighbors um, mm -hmm. and community members, uh, and then also using these tools. Uh, you know, we, we're in a, a virtual space as well. So I'm um, having a lot of online trainings and online mass meetings for folks. Um, and then just like, you know, kind of a lot of the day to day keeping up on calls and, and staying together. So a lot of it has been virtual. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, after the, you know, the uprising, after the death of George Floyd, we are in a time of rebellion. Yeah. Um, an uprising of historic um, proportion. So even to you know what what the conversation has been in Chicago about these businesses downtown destroyed, mm -hmm. um, the way that that is framed uh, is never talked about in the fact that you know in America, but particularly in Chicago, the levels of racially concentrated poverty, uh, the levels of inequity and inequality are at an all time high. Uh, sure. So the Mag Mile, as one of the wealthiest uh, places of retail and tourism, uh, next to these places. Uh, of deprivation, of organized abandonment um, within a pandemic. Uh, and then you come into Inglewood and shoot you know, someone um, and then antagonize uh, people in the community after you shoot someone. Uh, when things like this happen all over the world, 
people rise up. They right. used to call them peasant uprisings. Mm -hmm. uh, and, we, and we think about it historically, like with some type of valor uh, or, or, or beauty or power. Uh, but right. when it's young black people, um, it's viewed as demonic or problematic or violent. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, they don't talk about the fact that, you know, armed militias come and shoot people in the back um, and young black people understand that there's a connection between capital and someone getting shot in my neighborhood. So I'm going to go take something in a time where I'm not getting what I need. Uh, and so it might not be um, within like the moral code of liberal society, but actually no one was harmed. Um, and it is what happens when oppression builds up. Um, right. and inequality builds up. And so if we don't want these things to happen, uh, why don't we ask the question of why organically, because these are not organized events, right? Like no one mm -hmm. passed out a flyer and said, hey, <laughs> the flyer, right? like, imagine right. the, the, the life of, oh, something just happened and now I'm in this this mode of action. That means you are already experiencing yeah. uh, a, a level of disruption. Um, and why no one with a, a human empathy asks, what do those people need? Mm -hmm. What is the housing conditions of those thousands of young people in the street? What are the employment conditions? What is the health conditions during a pandemic where both of our political parties are promising that we're not going to give health care to people um, while people are dying at, at rapid rates? Um, we don't ask what are the conditions of the people. Uh, so, yeah, I'll stop like uh, uh, rambling or getting on my speech no. there. Uh, uh, but, yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's been quite a summer, to say the least. Simple. <laughs> it it's still, <laughs> he had a quote in the conversation that he and I were discussing this topic mm -hmm. about the looting and the writing. And he said that's because people are, are can't be concerned about the, the cotton burning on the plantation in the in the yeah. midst of the uprising. Yeah. So wow. it, 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 worrying it about the store yeah. downtown, worrying about Gucci uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or Nordstrom's downtown um, in 2020 is like worrying about the cotton burning on a plantation during a slave uprising in 1820. Mm. And so mm. my question is like, you know, when people see these stories, and that's why I always say don't trust your news sources, particularly corporate news, because whose side are you really on? Um, yeah. And if we looked at this with some historical perspective, uh, you would know, you know, which side of the fence you land um, mm -hmm. and where the real violence is. Um, and the violence is people not having what they need when it is available. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's my thing, yeah. is that our society yeah. produces and is capable of making sure everyone has a place to sleep, everyone has medicine, and everyone has enough food, and people every day make choices to not do that. That is the violence that people are responding to. Wow. Has there been an opportunity, or has there been an occasion, I should say, in which someone, uh, either from an administration, I'm not saying who's, uh, or uh, some business leader has come forward because there's, I listen to a lot of talk radio, black, mm -hmm. white, and, and, and in between, but there's always these people who say, what can I do? Who do I talk to? Has there been someone in this long, hot summer of 2020, or even before that, come to you and said, let's work together. I, 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 I see where you, where you are headed. I see your plan. I see your vision. And let us make a change. No. <laughs> <laughs> Simple answer. Simple no, answer. No, not really. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. they, you know, there are people who have proximity to privilege and power that are interested. But if you're asking like, um, and then there also, there is a, a political absurdity. So there are mm -hmm. new uh, older people in, in city council that are doing good work and are uplifting this fight. Uh, but like, for example, like folks from the mayor's administration in any mm -hmm. type of good faith, uh, no, they, they gaslight our movement. They try to uh, mm -hmm. make us seem insignificant or, or act like, as if we don't exist. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, the political power of our city and of our state, uh, I would say is in opposition uh, yeah. to, to, to what we stand for. And it's less about um, glass breaking downtown. Um, mm -hmm. and it's more about the commitment to capitalism. Right. Uh, right. It, it is, it, and you and you can't mess with their money. You just yeah. can't. You <laughs> what, just... what was your affiliation with Apple, uh, that, that project you did? Uh, oh, um, that was with my podcast, uh, just uh, uh, a live series uh, in the Apple Store uh, down on Michigan Avenue. <laughs> As I got these AirPods. <laughs> and so, were you able to engender any kind of relationship through that, or that was just a, a period of time in which those, you broadcast? Those from there? are good people, like locally, who work in the store, who do programming. So it's almost like the folks who book the concerts. So you know, mm -hmm. as talent was brought in, and certainly had great conversations. Um, so that's the weird thing. There's never a time when anybody in real life ever disagrees with the things right, uh, that, that right. they say. So in yeah. spaces, whenever, you know, 
culturally or politically have been invited. You know, it's been well received. Folks feel transformed and is welcomed. Uh, but but in true positions of authority or institutional power, uh, no, I, I've not seen any like good faith efforts because uh, you don't need to talk to me to do the right thing. You don't mm. need to talk to me to fund schools. You don't need to talk to me to open to keep hospitals open. Uh, if you want to be on the right side, like I have to do this because you are not doing the right thing. If if they yeah. if there were, um, I think what is needed. Uh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't need to do the job. I can just like go somewhere and try to be cute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and live the good life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, are you, uh, are you, and you were talking about coronavirus testing. Um, are you all still finding in, in Chicago about the, uh, the escalation of cases or, or is it uh, seemingly at a steady level now? I've been keeping up as much, Dad. Have you what you been saying? I have. Um, we're we're uh, we're hovering right around a four percent positive rate. Um, you know, the the death cases are not as many, but there's still you know between uh, eight hundred to a thousand people with positive uh, cases on a daily mm-hmm. basis. But Illinois and and I, we have it's broken down. Out, we've broken down into counties into zones. So like Will County, for instance they have a different restriction from the rest of the county because they had a spike in that area. So our, our governor, I think is, you know, kind of being proactive with really getting a good job and handle on it. And uh, so that's why we're able to do Riddles Comedy Club because we, <laughs> we haven't been pushed back to phase two or three. Right, right. And 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 good for you. And I, and I, I wanted to talk about that because Damon, you have been um, right there in the forefront of, opening up and and doing the right thing that uh, a lot of people are still kind of of trepidatious about that and 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 wondering uh, is this the time or but I but I got to get out there and the people need to laugh and how best to do that how are you how are you faring with all that well um, we in particular we have 200 seats but we only allow 50 people that's our max uh, so, you know, if people come in, they sit with the people that they brought. We do temp checks. Um, we don't sit parties with other people. Uh, most of the time, some people keep their masks on, some don't. Uh, sometimes it's funny because you might see a couple, you know, that came in and they they, they rode together. They, <laughs> they they did a little something last night. <laughs> it was just them with their masks on. I'm like, y'all. <laughs> Y'all think we got it? We <laughs> <laughs> each other for the whole last 24 hours. Then you're going to come in here and ask up. So <laughs> that's understandable. But, you know, the, the distance is there. So we have a fun with it. And then it's just good for them, you know, because especially like couples and even single people who have been, you know, kind of cooped up and, and don't to have that that communal experience with laughter. Mm-hmm. Well, I always tell people to laugh to their chest. Don't laugh up. I don't like <laughs> Just in case, laugh at yourself. (laughs) (laughs) You're so silly, but you're right. (laughs) I'm. So, so you you do that. You're about twenty five percent capacity uh, at, at Riddles, and and people are responding. Yeah, uh, well, we get 50 people allowed, but it depends on who we have. Like when D-Ray came and did a pop-up, you know, right. we, had, we had about 63 people. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> we did okay. about 63 on that one, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, typically, that's the good part about it for the people that are, uh, don't have uh, still concerns about it. We're not even doing 50. We might have 30 or, or some shows, 25, but it's just enough for us to have an audience mm-hmm. and for those people to have that experience and get back out. So, it, you know, like I said, I'm dipping my toe into, you know, the situation, but I'm not rushing full speed because I still get a couple dollars on employment. But, um, <laughs> but since that 600 fell off, we had to get back out. <laughs> right? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We, we was crab legging and, and, and lobster tail, and now we didn't get reacquainted with chicken. You know, so, um, <laughs> dark meat. <laughs> you know, those, those you got packs, wing dings you know, over there. <laughs> it's, it's really been good for the people. I, I believe you can tell, like the comments and the social media afterwards. Like I just needed that laugh, and I needed to be out mm-hmm. and needed to experience that. Uh, so what I do want to do is start live streaming because when the when the weather breaks here in Chicago, that's another thing. You know, right. I didn't 
beautiful land that they've been using for these training sessions and meetings are going to end in Chicago at about yeah. October 30th. Y'all going to be back to virtual. Uh, okay. So, so all of the, you know, the rooftops and the outdoor dining situation going to go away. So we'll be prim primary options for people that want to come inside and do that. So I think it'll grow a little bit at that point. And hopefully the numbers will decrease and we'll see a change. You know, it's a hoax until November 4th. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, um, Damien, I was asking your dad about uh, about his work in, in in comedy, but with all that you do and and all that you take on, all the all of the responsibilities you have, how do you take care of your soul? How do you how do you replenish yourself? Mm, I, I mean, that's a that's a really good question. It's been a struggle and like a, a learned lesson to, to to stay dedicated to those processes. Um, certainly as a, um, a building my, my crafts and, and, and my thinking. So, you know, reading and writing is really important. Um, and, and then trying to also maintain the body. Um, so trying to like get my smoothies and my, my supplements, uh, mm -hmm. um, going and, you know, I'm lucky to have a, a really great life partner and who's also in this work with me. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, getting to have somebody to, to, you know, hold you up and, and be able to, you know, blow steam off with. Um, uh, picked up a pretty, pretty consistent weed habit. <laughs> <laughs> like father, like son. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, I, probably, I probably got it beat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was a fella. No. Right. <laughs> and, and on a bicycle, no less. <laughs> But 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 it's hard. But but I think one of the things that you know in the last few years has become more clear, and as I study what's been most impactful historically, is re recognizing like people working for their liberation or people mm -hmm. working for a collective good uh, is really a spiritual legacy and tradition, um, mm -hmm. and so. One thing, you know, at our best, what we attempt is for the work itself to be regenerative. Um, and so it's not always rah, rah, megaphone, um, you know, uh, proverbial Molotov cocktails. Cause, yeah, um, yeah. You, watch <laughs> 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 um, um, you know, it, it's also about peace circles. It's about planning together. It's about meals. It's about gardening. Uh, it's about art. Uh, uh, so really trying to make sure that that creativity and healing um, is central to the organizing. It is part of the the, the best answer when, when we're functioning uh, at mm -hmm. our optimal. Um, but but then also try, what I've been learning uh, is how to give myself a break. Um, and I think that's something that just all people need to hear no matter what field. Uh, I think yeah. this world can be really gloomy. I think the way information is organized right now is, is detrimental to like our psychology. Um, mm -hmm. And we can put a lot of like pressure and burden on ourselves or, or it's easy to be stuck in like melancholy. Uh, but recognizing just like on a day to day that like, you know, if, if certain basic needs are met, life is really beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. and so, so trying to lean and ground into that and knowing that we all don't have to be everything. And that also includes myself. Uh, and so knowing that like sometimes having these conversations is more my work, um, than being, you know, in, on s some bullhorn or, or marching down the street all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so trying to pick my battles and, and take it easier uh, yeah. is part of the answer. And take it easy on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it wouldn't hurt if your dad didn't have a took a loose boat that he could take you out on every <laughs> once in a while, huh? Yeah, we, we ain't been splashing this summer, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the recreation. I, I, checked on, I checked on Brother T today just to see what was happening. Oh, you going to be just fine. You be ready to Hey, <laughs> today uh, he already promised me Fourth of July and and Labor Day weekend. And, and um, like, 2021. Infinity <laughs> <laughs> and beyond, trust me. <laughs> but you know what? I gotta say, following uh, your dad, it's just great sometimes to see you guys in like with your grandmother or mm -hmm. kick it back with the family and and in your in and in your dad's backyard and things like that. Those are really special moments, and uh, it's it was good to see you smile and and you guys hang out together. Mm -hmm. So and and that really does fill your spirit and yeah. and you know with with good times like that. But this. This, ladies and gentlemen, I wish I had the real magazine, but his dad has all the copies that I don't have. This. What page is it, Damon? 
I don't know the physical pain. Wait, wait, oh wait there's more. <laughs> Is is featured in this magazine, The Great Fire. Uh, guest editor is Tanahisi Coates, and uh, this is just uh, with Brianna on the on the cover. Um, first of all, how did how did this happen? Yeah. So first, want to you know say again, rest in peace to Brianna Taylor. Um, and you know, as we mourn the, the loss of our sacred spirits. Um, recognizing that you know justice means creating a new world where these things don't happen, uh, mm -hmm. and so as we all carry this pain, like know that we all have a responsibility. Um, also, honor Angela Davis, who I think is on an alternative cover. Um, uh, yes, really, you know the the uh, like the matron saint um, that is ushered in, and she didn't do it alone. She, you know, she is a human being and is a part of a collective. Uh, uh, but it's so important to, to our world and does not get the, the shine as a living icon. Um, mm -hmm. So how I was able to be in it um, is I, I, um, I me and Tanasi Coates have a mutual friend, uh, the writer Eve Ewing, uh, mm -hmm. who's an amazing scholar and creator and writer. Um, uh, and so they are, have a real good relationship. And so um, also he has a relationship with a mentor of mine, Dr. Barbara Ransby, an ama an also an amazing activist, educator, scholar. Um, and so I was able to meet him about a year ago at an event about reparations here in Chicago. Um, and then um, he was trying to get Miriam Cabo, who's, uh, <laughs> who's uh, who everybody should know, but she ain't feel like doing it. Uh, so <laughs> I look for someone else. Uh, so he, he hit up Eve Ewing. Uh, and Eve Ewing, you know, you know, point him in my direction. And we had met before. Uh, and he came to a rally that we did a couple years ago for uh, Martin Luther King Day. Let me say you know, you know, Damon was a basketball fan and he was, you know, we have basketball has been a big part of our lives. Mm -hmm. He was always excited about athletes and I've gotten a chance to meet people. But when he met Brother Coach, it was like he met Kobe Bryant again. He was like, man, uh, man you know, I was like, you know, I wasn't really deep into the movie or the, or the uh, work. Man. Like, nah, man, you don't understand. I met the man, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, okay, cool. The time I said it, <laughs> yeah, so, so so you know he he definitely was um, <laughs> he he's pro provided uh you know an example of how to impact people's thinking in ways that I really aspire to it. and so being able to meet him or be in something that that he edited uh, was, was really an honor um and so yeah it, it was it was it was kind of uh um. Wow, I didn't I didn't know the context of it because it's, it's, uh -huh. it's virtual, so everything is all separate. Um, and so I didn't realize that I was going to be on like a list with like Black Thought and the Squad and and Mother Teresa and everybody. <laughs> 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 but it's really but, it's really been a beautiful honor. So how did that work in this age of of the pandemic? So you said mm -hmm. a lot of the work was done and discussion was done uh, virtually, but obviously uh, the photographer had to come and set it up and and do all of this and 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 go through the photography. Yeah, so right? it, it, it's wild. Um, so I'm just a little humble, little activist, as they call me. I don't really <laughs> use the word, but you know, wearing my same little dirty shoes and and, and beat up t-shirts every day, um, and they send me this box of clothes. Right. And it was like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of clothes. <laughs> they gave me no instructions either. They just said, "Here's here's a box of clothes." I'm like, "Oh, for so me, they came up." We should have <laughs> 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 like fifty stuff in there. You know, it was it was really like kind of intimidating and kind of scary because it's like you know it's supposed to be for the people and don't want to like be in the the kingly road right, Prince right. King's airport trip. Uh, <laughs> trying to talk about making sure that, that folks have a place to stay. Right. Um, but but the, the piece that they ended up having me in was a black designer, Fear of God. And so what what they did, my partner mm -hmm. Jennifer um, took picture of me in it in the house and then sent it to them. That so that was the the, the selection process of the things that they sent. And uh -huh. then go and then we went to a park right near our community space, the breathing room. Um, here on the south side, and we luckily Chicago has really beautiful park districts, and we found a tree, and we you know took some pictures, and he was over there like six to seven feet, yeah, uh, and then sent it back, and then then the you know the journalist emailed me the questions, and we corresponded that that way, uh, and then you know this is the result, so it's, it's been been kind of a whirlwind.
So how do you think you were represented in this? Because I think it came off beautifully. And I, and I think I think you're a brilliant spokesperson. I think that you have uh, the gift of words, uh, unlike a lot of people. Uh, and I just I'm just wondering your immediate response to that. I mean, your 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 dad, your mom are very excited yeah. and proud of yeah. you, obviously. <laughs> but when you open that and you look at it for the first time, what goes through your mind? Um, the first thing that goes through my mind is, is the history. Um, mm. You know, this, this, you know, one, the history of mass communication and public, you know, one that this thing exists um, and seeing all of the work and all of the editors and all the writers and I, in being asked to to do it, I didn't have a perspective of what the whole piece was. I just right. knew Nancy Coates and Angela yeah. Davis and Eve Ewan was around it. So it had to be something good. Um, so seeing one, again, like who I was in context in was was kind of earth shattering. Because uh, the notion of like celebrity activism is actually a really fraught thing and it's something yeah. I really strive to avoid. Uh, sure. But with that, like fear and anxiety aside, um, one on a personal level, I was very happy for my family and my parents. Um, and, and then and then like future descendants and generations, this mm. feels like a moment or a, a, an image that will probably, you know, be one of the ones when I'm gone that, that folks will look back on. Because um, I'm always thinking about history in the future. Um, and then, you know, as as I don't re I wear so many hats, I don't know which one is actually mine. Uh, <laughs> I'm, ste I'm stepping into realizing that all of this work um, is is around popular education, um, and so that was my attempt um, in trying to answer the questions: is how do I be honest and and um, portray an example of humanity that I that I want to see uh, mm -hmm. and be vulnerable? Uh, but how also how do I use this not to just promote um, or or self celebrate? Uh, but to try to, you know, introduce some new ideas or, or continue a legacy of this liberatory radical tradition of, 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 of love um, yeah. that, that, you know, I see myself in. And so I, I felt that um, what I attempted to articulate came out well. Um, the only thing that, I, you know, I, I wish is that I could have um, brought more people with me. Mm -hmm. um, be, and that's the only thing that, like, I, I, I am uh, feeling. They were with that, you. They were yeah, with you. yeah, yeah. And so, you yeah. know, it, it's it's an honor to be highlighted. There's some discomfort in being pulled out, uh, you mm -hmm. know, part part of what we're trying to have is like a leader full movement. Um, mm -hmm. And there's so many people that I look to and admire um, th that like, you know, I, I want this to be a, a moment for as well. Uh, but there's only, you know, one page. Uh, yeah. And so so living with that, that and the choice and then also the value of relationships. Um, yeah. And so feeling really honored. Uh, that this was not something I asked for, but based off the relationships that, that I've had and, and worked to build, um, being able to, to be able to receive this and, you know, hopefully um, honor the, the people that, that I'm accountable to. Yeah, you and, have. Well, and, I just and, to no, I, I was going to ask you, <laughs> your, your response to, to seeing him in, in this magazine. Well, you know, it's not even uh, just him, because to be honest, this, this young man has done a lot of things in his life, you know, movies and commercials and mm -hmm. things of that nature. So he made me proud basketball and he got an academic scholarship in, in school and, and you know, turned his, his third eye on and became a person. But this issue, I, I, I celebrate the entire issue, what yeah. it stands for. It's, it's beautiful examples of blackness throughout and all type of, you know, there are celebrities and people you had or have heard of or may not have heard of, but this should be in everybody's household, like yeah. in a magazine on the coffee. I thought this about that cheap. too. That's yeah. why I got so buying a bunch of them. So y'all better get out and get yours. Um, <laughs> but I want all my family members to have this in their household so they can mm -hmm. visit this five, 10 years from now, 15 years from now and look back on it because it's a it's an ode to all the people out there or a lot mm -hmm. of people that are doing the work. And so that's what I'm most proud that he's included. He, of course, I, I, I'm happy that he's been acknowledged for his, his work because even in this article, he said some things that are transpiring yes. this moment of movement, uh, he didn't even think that people would come around. Because he'd been talking this to me, you know, and as a father, I'm supportive, but I still didn't have a grasp of abolish the police and defund the police department. Mm -hmm. And now it's a whole world with signs and things that he's been talking about way before this came out as a popular thing. It was gratifying for me for him, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, because he has yeah. some frustration and, and he's such a heavy dude that when you know we're having basic kick it time, <laughs> we'll I'll ask him a question and it'll go from that to man, you know, <laughs> I'm like, there you go with that damn pill again. I'm trying, to <laughs> yeah, I've become quite the downer. <laughs> you know, it's, not so, downer. it's just like I, I always want to see where. 
and where does he find joy? You yeah. Know, to find joy because if you try to break down the all of the things that he's absorbing and he's aware mm -hmm. of, you know, because some of the stuff I'm dealing with the bliss of the ignorance of like I had no idea. I'm like, damn, now I can't be happy about this. You know what? Uh thank you for enlightening me, but damn it. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, hit some of this uh, um, ingredient here. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, you know what? I, I, I can't wait. See what happens in in my mailbox is that I know that they'll eventually come. Uh, there are some uh, issues of essence that are a little late in arriving because I think they're sitting at the post office and people are just you know kind of taking it in. And I'm sure that's what has happened with this particular issue of, of my Vanity Fair. So I, I know that it's going to come, but I am also going to go out and buy all the copies that I possibly can to support you and all of the, the wonderful people who are saluted. I, I think that they're doing great things. Um, even when you think about the uh, previous issue where Viola Davis was, was photographed by a, a Black photographer had a cover photo on Vanity Fair for the very first time. And, and that says a lot. I mean, it, it's a it's an amazing accomplishment, but it's also it's it's a statement about society that we're still having first black. Yeah, this. exactly. You know, yeah, simple yeah. stuff like uh, the come on now, the first black photographer twenty twenty. You know, so we got a lot of work to do, but we can celebrate as we go along for people. But it, I'm I'm so sick, man. You know, we had the first astronaut. The first we still having our first. You know. It's, yeah. That's frustrating. See, that's that peel right there. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, there's somebody. I think it was somebody on uh, on uh, Kevin Hart's uh, uh, XM radio station, and um and, and there's a guy, one of the Plastic Cup boys, and he's he's like, I I hate hearing about the first this and the first black this and first black that and this. But I am of the mind that I still think we need to to celebrate and to acknowledge and um. And even though it's like, damn, we're in 2020 and it's the first time this is happening, um, let's just celebrate. And because there's so much that brings us down, let us lift up and let us lift up young men like you, Damon Williams. You are truly, truly uh, a special, special man and a human being. And so we want to continue to uh, have you on and, and to talk about these things and, and also to see how your daddy's doing in the comedy biz uh, as he as he ventures out into uh, coronavirus land. Um, I really appreciate you guys and uh, and taking the time today uh, to come and talk. And, and as we um, hear all of the great things that you're doing and want to definitely uh, continue to lift you up and encourage you and also to put a little money in your daddy's pockets uh, amongst <laughs> the 50 people that can come Please in do. to, to riddles. You know. <laughs> David, where were you this weekend? Oh, uh, I'll be home. I will, I'll be home at riddles. Uh, I'm really not going anywhere anytime soon. Okay. Uh, yeah, you just in Ohio, right? Yeah, I was in Cleveland uh, with Sam Silk. I do his radio. Oh show. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tuesday, oh, Thursday, uh, Damon, what you think segment? So mm -hmm. that's wzak dot uh, com, uh, wzak Cleveland dot com. Uh, so you can hear like what we used to do on the join the show. I uh, also want to acknowledge another first. Uh, I have the first black mailman that brings mail before ten a.m. <laughs> <laughs> want to give that brother his kudos. <laughs> And ask for a plate. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mail man was bogus. <laughs> I love that. I love you guys. I thank you so much for coming on. Uh, David, uh, David, tell your mom I said hello. David, tell Juanita I send my love as well. And uh, J. Anthony Brown taking the day off because he works so hard. Um, <laughs> and so he'll be back next Monday. And tomorrow, uh, Kevin Woodson, formerly of the Tom Jordan Morning Show and the Man of a Thousand Voices, is going to be here with me tomorrow. You guys have a great evening. Uh, Damon, find your joy. Find you. your joy. Okay. All right. And, and Damon. You keep up the hard work and the good work, keeping us laughing too. We appreciate you guys. Love Take you. care, everybody. I love you back. Take care, everybody. Wash your hands. Put your mask on. Be careful. Be safe. We'll see you tomorrow.